Hello, my name is Alan Bainbridge. I'm from BBC Workplace and I've been leading the re-procurement of the Facilities Management Service. And we've selected InterServe. Why have we selected InterServe? After a long and exhaustive uh, competitive dialogue phase, it was the organisation who put in the best bid. It's the organisation who we felt had the best cultural fit to go forward uh, with our ever-changing landscape and all the demands that the BBC will be facing in the future. So it was a company decision and not a decision based on the performance of individuals or particular sites or groups of people on the current contracts. So the most important message I want to get across to people who are working up and down the country on all our different sites is that this is not a reflection on anything you've done or not done and with the TUPI process and the mobilisation from InterServe I hope that this is not too disruptive to you but please be assured that this was a company decision and not a decision as I say based on any particular performance. InterServe are going to introduce their uh, process going forward from now until April because the contract stays in place until April um, but as I say hopefully you get enough information so any fears uh, can be allayed. Hello my name is Lee Carter and I'm the Strategic Account Director for InterServe and I have overall responsibility for our contract with the BBC going forward. I've been involved in the process all the way through from the start of the bid um, and I've very much enjoyed working with the BBC and I'm really looking forward to working with you going forward. I'd like to introduce a few more sort of key members of our team from InterServe. Stephanie Johnson, who is the Head of Transition and Mobilisation and who will be talking to you about mobilisation and our engagement with you and next steps. We also have Tony Byrne and Nicola Clough. There is also a mobilisation team of over 40 people that will be involved in this mobilisation and transition process for the new BBC contract. And Stephanie, in her presentation, will tell you a little more about that later. I'd now like to just give you the opportunity to look at a short video about InterServe and our brand and what we do. So hopefully that gave you a flavour for our brand. And now I'd like to just spend a little bit of time talking about InterServe as a company. We are 
a UK-based company with global reach. We're in the FTSE 300 and the majority of our work is in construction and support services, which is where the facilities management contracts such as, such as this one would sit. We are a large company. We operate in a lot of different environments. We have a lot of different clients and customers in those environments. We also have some sort of more niche areas of our business, such as equipment services, which is all about false work and form work, which is the specialised scaffolding that you see being used to build uh, massive bridges and uh, large tower blocks. Um, and we also do work where we actually build and maintain areas such as schools and prisons and hospitals. And we also do a lot of work now with the government in areas such as uh, job fit rehab and welfare to work, where we actually look at bringing the long-term unemployed back into work. If you're interested in understanding more about exactly what InterServe do, I would encourage you to have a look at our website as there's a lot of very interesting material on there. We do have a fairly global reach, particularly in our construction and our false work and form work business. And we also do quite a lot of facilities management work uh, through the Ministry of Defence in areas such as the Falkland Islands and the Ascension Islands and Gibraltar. And we also look after the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, their embassies and residences throughout Northern Europe and around France and Spain. But we are very much a UK-based business and we do have over 29,000 staff and tw over 25,000 clients in the UK. And here are just a few facts about some of the things that InterServe uh, do. And I'd like to draw your attention particularly to the fact that 20,000 people have transferred into our business over the past five years. So we do have a lot of experience in transferring people from other organisations into InterServe. And I'm pleased to say that we also have a very good track record of those people staying with our business. We work with a lot of different public and private sector companies. And we do think this is one of the reasons that uh, we were able to become such a good fit for what the BBC are looking for. Because we do feel that the BBC has some areas that fit more into sort of public sector and more into private sector. And through us having that, uh, that sort of depth of experience, that has really helped us to understand what the BBC are looking for. And our strap line in InterServe is ingenuity at work. And this is all about us wanting our people to have the best possible opportunity to provide the most imaginative solutions to our customers. And we've recently redefined our values and done that in conjunction with our clients and with all of our staff out in the operations to understand what's really important. The first of those is everyone has a voice. We actually want to understand what our people think because they're the people that know best about how to make a difference and how to make things good. And we have a lot of very strong two-way communication channels and this is one of, one of those sorts of channels that you're seeing today and hopefully you will be seeing more and more of that. It's also about getting people to take pride in what they do and also making sure that we recognise and reward people for that. We have a lot of very strong recognition schemes uh, in the company and we have designed and included a very specific reward and recognition scheme uh, on the BBC contract. But it's also about making sure that we do the right thing and that's making sure that we have the right open and honest communications with our clients, that we do the right thing for our staff and that you do the right thing in terms of delivering the services that we need you to deliver to the organisations that we serve. And the fourth and final one is about bringing better to life. We've always got to strive to make things better because if we don't, somebody else will. And this is all about a people business. It's the people in our business that make us successful. So I'd now like to talk to you a bit about the contract with the BBC. It's all areas, all hard and soft services and all of the specialist areas that you're currently involved in. The only two areas of your current contracts that are not part of this contract are the security manned guarding and the catering, which the BBC are letting separately. But clearly we'll, we will be working very closely with those suppliers too. Our model is to self-deliver as much as possible. So everybody will be transferring directly into InterServe. 
The contract is for a duration of five years initially, with the opportunity to extend by a further two years, and then a further two years after that. So, as long as we all play our cards right, this should be a very long, happy relationship of at least nine years. It's for the total BBC UK estate, so that's over 150 different sites and uh, about 220 buildings. And we will be transferring uh, up to 1,100 people into InterServe as part of this contract, and we're really looking forward to welcoming you all into our team. And it's all about a partnership approach, about helping and leading and working very closely with the BBC to continue to transform what we do with them to make it right for what the BBC themselves are trying to do as part of their core business. We spent a lot of time in dialogue with the BBC over the last eight months, really understanding what their objectives are. And it became clear to us that it was about putting the BBC staff and visitors at the heart of everything we do. And we came up with the idea of sort of twin themes, if you like, of releasing creativity and unlocking efficiency. The releasing creativity is all about allowing the BBC to be able to deliver what they need to deliver in terms of their vision and their mission and their values, but also about releasing creativity in the people working for us to provide the BBC with an ever better uh, standard of service. And unlocking efficiency was all about making sure that what we were providing was fit for purpose, that it's delivered at best value to the BBC, and that we get the resources in the right place at the right time doing the right things. And then we talked about certain specific areas, things like getting a consistent service, so that no matter which building you go into, you know you're at the BBC. But at the same time, recognising that you've all got very, very different types of clients and end users in your buildings that have different jobs to do, so that the services do need to be tailored to what those requirements are. It's about being flexible. It's about allowing you to be able to quickly respond to your end user's needs, not having to go through lots of different process or lots of levels of management to actually get things done. And also about us as an organisation being able to respond to the continuing changes in the BBC portfolio. I've talked already about partnership and that's really about having that partnership, that the contract stays in the drawer. We all know what we've got to deliver and how we've got to deliver it, but we're working together as an integral part of the BBC. And continuity, of course. It goes without saying we've got to keep people safe and we've got to keep the BBC broadcasting. And we understand how important that is, which is why we have not proposed any major changes uh, at the start of this contract. We will not be starting the transformation until we've had the time to really understand what we're dealing with and understand whether the solutions that we've come up with are going to work in each of the different buildings. So we will get the pace of change right and appropriate. So, what do we want out of our relationship during mobilisation? It is going to be challenging. We do need your help and support. We want to work with you because we need to build on our understanding. We need to test out the solutions that we've proposed to the BBC. Will they really work? And we need to make sure that we communicate and that we get the right communications from you so that we know what it is we've got to do and where it is that we've got certain things to worry about. So we want you to work together with us, but we're really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stephanie Johnston. I'm Head of Mobilisation and Transition for InterServe, and I'm just going to talk to you about how InterServe mobilised this contract, and also about the CHUPI process and what is going to happen and how we're going to work with you in the coming months to take us to the 1st of April. So how do InterServe mobilise? We have a dedicated transitions team who follow a very well-managed process. We're extremely experienced in running large mobilisations. We, we are going to have dedicated mobilisation managers based at the hub sites. And one thing I think you're probably already concerned about is what their role is. I want to stress to you 
They're not there to spy on you. They're there to work with you, to understand what you do today and support you to ensure that when it gets to the 1st of April, you guys can continue to deliver a, an excellent service to the BBC. As you'd expect, as part of our mobilisation team, which is around 40 so far, we have different work streams. We have human resources, we have communications, both of which that will be working with you over the coming months to talk to you about that transfer and actually let you know what's going on, what's coming up, both related to that transfer and also related to the mobilisation. We have an operations team who are going to be really getting under the skin of all those different services out in those buildings, all the suppliers we need, all the consumables, equipment, tools, vehicles and stuff like that that you guys need to continue delivering service. We have an IT department who will be delivering the systems that InterServe have proposed, but also making sure that if you've got a computer today that belongs to your current employer, that we replace that with an InterServe piece of kit and you have an InterServe email address and you have all the tools and equipment that you need to continue. We've split out engineering and risk on this mobilisation because of the broadcast continuity element and the criticality of the BBC estate to ensure that we really focus on supporting you to make sure that you can continue to ensure that the BBC stay on air. The thing we really, really need to stress is we're not proposing any major change on the 1st of April. We're going to support you so that on the 31st of March you go home working for your current employer. On the 1st of April you walk through the door, you might work for InterServe, but what you do day to day should not majorly change. There will be a few tweaks here and there. You may have to order things from a different supplier. The process to order those things might be slightly different, but actually day to day in your role will not change. We've presented to the BBC stakeholders as part of the dialogue, and this is how we articulated um, the process that we're going to go to. We've been working on this for 11 months now. We have a 400 line mobilisation plan and each of the work streams has a lot more detail around what they're going to do and what they need to tick off between now and the 1st of April. But what we're really stressing is what we have got to do is really understand and get under the skin of this estate. We need to do asset surveys. We need to ensure that that key data is handed over and we understand the critical spaces in the buildings. We need to use our proven transfer process to ensure that we make that as smooth and painless as possible for you guys. And most important, underpinning everything, we need to make sure that we effectively communicate with you, the stakeholders, the other key suppliers that work for the BBC, to ensure that everybody knows what we're doing, why we're doing it, and expectations are managed. But what we're aiming for is a seamless transition where continuity and safety are never compromised. So, just really confirming what Tupi is. And I know that all your employers will already have spoken to you to actually inform you that Tupi does apply. And what we just want to confirm is that if you are still in employment before the transfer, your contract of employment will come across to InterServe. That means your terms and conditions stay. And if you've got continuity of service for 10 or 15 years, that continuity of service comes across with you. If you are employed in a role on the 31st of March, unless you tell us otherwise, we will ensure and expect that you will transfer to InterServe on the 1st of April. So what's that Tupi process going to look like? We will consult with you and talk to you between now and the 1st of April. There'll be constant communications and we will work with you to understand your continuity of service, confirm what our understanding is of your terms and conditions and we will start to integrate you into the InterSurf culture and start building the team that we're going to use to run this contract. So hopefully, once you start to feel comfortable about the fact that we understand your terms and conditions that those will transfer, you'll start feeling part of the InterSurf family and actually be looking forward to transferring to us. So what are our next steps? Obviously, we're here today talking to you and we are about, once we've actually been out and done our staff briefings, we are about to start locating people on sites, understanding all the different services, engaging with subcontractors. And when we move into January and February, that's where we're going to do the detailed Tupi process. So our HR colleagues will be out at all the sites and touring the country and actually coming and talking to you and offering you the opportunity for one-to-ones and really getting under the skin of what you do today. We'll do a payroll test 
towards the end of the mobilisation period where we'll pay a penny into your bank account and ask you to confirm back that you've received that money. That is just really a check and balance to understand that when we come to pay your first salary, you're actually going to receive it. We'll continue to communicate with you and give you progress updates of where we're doing, what we're focusing on at the moment, so you understand why people are asking certain questions when they come to your site. And moving into March, which will be a very, very busy month, we'll start to issue go-live communications to you. We'll start to issue how-to guides and let you know what day one's going to look like. And actually make sure that you're equipped to do your role, so you've got consumables, tools, equipment, and the vehicles that you need. But also, we'll, at that point, we'll be trying to confirm with you that you're actually comfortable with what's going on and that you feel that you can continue to deliver a good service to the BBC on the 1st of April. So what will we do for you? We will be available for you and we will keep you informed along the journey. And we will share our plans and ideas and we are open to challenge. So please, if you've got a silly question that you want to ask or you start to feel that some of the stuff that InterServe have proposed might not work at your site, please raise it with us. We have a website, we have an email address that you can send stuff to. Please just let us know and we'll come and discuss it with you because you may have some ideas that are better than InterServe's and we're happy to listen and help integrate those into our proposals if need be. What do we need from you? Please be open with us. Please communicate with us and please share your ideas. Do attend the consultation meetings that we're offering and the roadshows. And especially if you've got anything that you're worried about, make sure you take up the opportunity of a one-to-one. -one. And a very important thing is please, please fill in the cheapy documents that we send to you and get them back as soon as you can. That's how we absolutely confirm your terms and conditions, make sure we can pay you and all sorts of detailed things like that. And please, please contribute to our team's success. It's very important to us that you contribute into this mobilisation and that we do it in a collaborative way, so please do. We have just put up here some questions. Um, having met with all the current suppliers and also had some dialogue with the unions already, there are a few things that are common themes that are coming up, so we want to just confirm where we are with those and let you know what's going to happen. So holidays. We're not asking that you guys take any accrued holiday before you transfer to us. As far as we're concerned, that transfers to us and you can take that as you would have done previously. If you currently have a season ticket loan, we're currently talking to all the current suppliers about how we actually might transfer that debt so you just continue paying, paying that as you do today so that you don't have to repay the debt to your current supplier and then um, take it up again with InterServe. We may harmonise paydays, but until we actually understand what the different paydays for the different suppliers are, we actually can't do that, but that will come out as part of the detailed Tupi discussions in January. We are currently looking at pensions with BBC, with your current in, in, um, suppliers and our pensions department. And when we come out to talk to you in January, we will do pensions roadshows to make sure that that all happens effectively. And uniforms. We will be changing uniforms in some of the buildings, but you will still be branded BBC Workplace to give that one team approach. And I would just like to thank you for listening to me and we really do look forward to working with you.